Over the last, call it 15, 20 years, probably before that, and probably expedited less than that, like less 15 years, the Batman archetype, the Batman mythos, the Batman character has just completely saturated the public sphere. Something about that archetype, like that version of being a hero is being caught in everybody's collective unconscious. There's a reason that the Batman character is so popular. It isn't just by coincidence that like out of all the different superheroes, like that Batman specifically is one of the ones that is just like so culturally dominant. And like everybody thinks about Batman and, and Batman's like the most important character right now. I think the other way, and I'm not gonna talk about Spider-Man, but like the other thing you could think about that's worth thinking about is um, although Batman is probably the character that's just like enveloped and engrossed everybody over the past, like everything is Batman. The Batman movies are the most important. The Batman movies are the best. Everybody loves Batman. Like he's a Batman, Batman video games and like Batman memes and like just Batman, Batman, Batman. He's by far like the most culturally prevalent superhero right now. Um, probably the stickiest ethic though is the Spider-Man one out of any superhero movie ever. The stickiest ethic or even line that's come out of any movie is with great power comes great responsibility. There's a reason that that one sticks culturally and that one's been so sticky in our brains and it's not by accident. Putting that aside, there's a reason that the Batman mythos, the Batman archetype has been um, so prevalent. It's in the collective unconscious. And um, I've been trying to think about why. We know that culturally it's a massive deal. I'll just, and this is where I'm gonna get a little bit personal. Um, and it might sound like it could get weird or come across the wrong way, but I'm just gonna talk about it. So I've had like a very deep, obsession is probably the right word. I've been obsessed with the Batman character since I was like 12. Like obsessed with it. You know, the Dark Knight movies, like the entire trilogy is like some of my favorite movies of all time. The Arkham video games were the only video games I ever played growing up. I've got my Batman mug right there. I have a Batman mask. I, I went through like a really weird phase and like, I think maybe 2020, maybe before where I would wear like a black turtleneck because I thought like Bruce Wayne was so cool. And like, for me, like if I'm telling the story of myself, like you can't tell my story without including that. Like you can't tell like a genuine recap of that story. It's like, it's been like a very, it's been like a part of my identity. I know that sounds weird, but like growing up, it was like very important to me. It was such an important character. It was such an important mythos. It was such an important part of my identity. And um, I didn't know why, <laughs> because that's how stuff like this usually works. You don't know why, you're just drawn to things. Like in the same way, and the point that I'm trying to make is in the same way that the culture has just, for some reason, has just been obsessed with the Batman character. Like Batman specifically over the last 20 years, everybody, like culturally, and probably before that, like back to the 1980s, people have been obsessed with the Batman character. That's on like a cultural, like global scale, whatever. On a personal level, I've experienced that. I've always been like deeply drawn to the Batman character. And, um, I was thinking about this the other day and I think kind of, I understand a little bit why, why that character specifically is just like, um, why everybody's so drawn to it and why like I am so drawn to it. And um, hopefully this comes across in the way that it's intended. I'll do my best. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna talk through it. Like I said, if I'm gonna pick a bias, I'm gonna, I'm going to lean on the side of oversharing and maybe saying something cringy and self righteous -y and maybe like even a little bit like savior complexy, but um, I'm just going to, I'm going to talk about it. Um, I'm trying to think about the best way that I want to go about it. At the heart of the Batman mythos is 
or I should say central to the Batman character. Let's even generalize it first we, before we get into specific, like specifically with Batman. Each superhero, like archetypal superheroes, follow a pattern. There's a reason that those superheroes exist and there's a reason that they're designed and drawn and like represented in the way that they are. There's like specific elements that are important to that person's story. Um, the way an archetype works, which is what superheroes are, is you take like patterns of behavior of multiple different people that are like similar, and then you abstract out the commonalities between all of them and the commonality between that archetype that you see out in the world represented is like what a hero is. And so there's like a Superman archetype and there's like an Aquaman archetype and there's like a Green Lantern archetype and there's like a Spider-Man ar archetype. But like intentionally, these are different heroes that are different archetypes for different types of people because there's different types of people, right? And so the distinctions are actually important. And not only that, they represent real things that are going on in the real world. That's what an archetype is. That's why we have stories. Like if you were to change things about the Batman character, it would no longer be Batman. It wouldn't work. Um, for example, it's essential, like it's crucial to the Batman archetype that his parents die when he's young. Like it's vital. If you get rid of that detail, it's no longer Batman. It's like a different story, but it's like it's no longer Batman, right? There's like a pure, correct way to represent a character. And it's not just Batman, it's all of them. There's a correct way to represent the character that you're trying to show. And like the closer you get to that archetype, you know, the correct abstraction, um, the more people are going to resonate with the character because you're doing a faithful adaptation of a correct archetype. So let's talk about the Batman archetype um, and why it's, it's like so culturally gripping. Um, fundamental to the Batman archetype is pain. And I don't want to romanticize it. That's not what I'm doing. Um, but fundamental to the Batman archetype is pain. From the time he was a little kid, um, Batman was, and I'm, I'm using the word correctly, um, it's not like a watered down like concept creep like of the word. We all overuse this word way too much now. Um, but like Batman was like properly traumatized when he was a kid. And that's central to the Batman character. And... Um, Because of that, Batman spends the rest of his life in pain. There's a reason that he's represented as like dark and brooding and like bat cave and like below and like indoors and like that Robert Pattinson version of just like tortured and like he's just in pain. It's central to like the Batman archetype. He's just always in pain and it doesn't go away. Juxtaposed to that, and this is also central to the Batman archetype, is standing in clear juxtaposition to that, is Batman has all of the material things anybody could ever ask for, and in a material world you would think would make you happy. He's 6'3 and 200 and what, 10 pounds, 220 pounds of just pure muscle. He's as attractive as they get. His IQ is off the charts. It's like a hundred and whatever. I don't know. It doesn't matter. He speaks like 19 different languages is like a, like a proper polymath. Like he literally knows everything. Um, and he's a billionaire. So he's insanely hot, insanely rich and insanely smart. He could have sex with any girl he humanly wanted. He can learn any discipline immediately and he has all the money to do anything in the entire world that he wants. Materially, like culturally, you would expect, like those are all the things you could ever want. And yet he's miserable. He continues to be miserable. Trying to break this out culturally, um, 
I think we're a deeply traumatized culture right now. I think we're a deeply traumatized people. I think everybody's in pain. Everybody's depressed. Everybody's addicted. Everybody's like body dysmorphic. Like everybody's miserable right now. And yet we're the richest country in all of human history and in the entire world right now. Materially, we have all the stuff. Materially, we have all the technology and all the materials and like all the good stuff. And yet we're all miserable. There's a reason the Batman archetype resonates so strongly. Okay, here's where the hero part of it comes in. Batman could take that pain, which doesn't go away, and he could, he has the resources, he has the money, he has like the attractiveness, and he has the uh, intelligence. He could just do the Andrew Tate thing if he wanted to. I'm gonna have sex with as many girls as humanly possible. I'm going to make as much money as humanly possible. Or I'm just, or I'm just gonna like numb out maybe. I'm just gonna like just do weed and porn and alcohol and I'm just going to become a partier all day long. I'm just gonna party. And all I care about is getting higher and higher and ascending in the hierarchy. Batman could do that, he doesn't. And that's what makes him a hero. And it's central to the Batman archetype. What Batman does, somebody who's deeply traumatized, like may, the single most traumatic thing that could ever happen to you is your parents dying in front of you when you're a kid. It's central to the piece. He's just hurt. He's in so much pain. To be a hero, this is central to the archetype, to be a hero, to be a good person, if you're somebody who's deeply traumatized, is instead of redirecting that dark, brooding energy towards um, partying or towards sex or towards just numbing out, like I'm just going to do the video games and the porn and the, and the weed and the alcohol and just like live like that for the rest of my for the rest of my life, what Batman does and what makes him a hero, and this is why he's an archetype, and this is why we all care about him so much, is he's somebody who's deeply traumatized. And what he does in response to that is he decides that instead of redirecting that energy towards the hedonism thing, or instead of even redirecting it towards like arts or sports, or like he could become like, he's so smart, he could do any of those things. He could become like the best artist in the world. He directs his energy towards fixing things. That's what he does with that dark energy. He says, I'm going to redirect it towards making this place better. And it's also central to the story that he lives in the most corrupt city imaginable. He lives in Gotham. The policemen are corrupt. The politicians are corrupt. Um, there's villains everywhere. Crime is rampant. Economic inequality, like homeless people. Like he, it's important that he lives in that world. And what Batman does is he takes that dark energy and he redirects it towards trying to fix things. And that's what makes him a hero. He doesn't direct it towards himself. He doesn't direct it towards partying and sex and like whatever else. He decides that he's going to take that pain and he's going to use it to try and make the system better. And the pain doesn't go away. That doesn't make him feel better. It's always there. It's central to like the Batman mythos. He continues to hurt. He's still struggling. But to be, to be like, to generalize it, to be like a deeply traumatized culture, the proper thing to do, the heroic thing to do, and this is why we care so much about the Batman character, is because it's telling us what to do. If you're deeply traumatized, if you're deeply hurt, if you're just in so much pain, and it just doesn't go away, the right thing to do with that energy the noble thing to do is to direct that energy into, into trying fixing things. It's taking the entire system on as like your responsibility and I'm going to try and fix it. And it might not even work. Like, um, in the Batman story, he just, he gets the Joker and then the Joker escapes the prison. He gets the Joker and he puts him in prison and the Joker escapes. And then he goes and chases him again and brings him back and it doesn't even do anything. Like things get more, maybe things even get more corrupt. You know, maybe the politicians get worse and like maybe the, maybe the whole system gets worse and it gets more corrupt and more dark. And he, but what he does, he just keeps going. He just keeps trying. And, um, And that's like the right thing to do. If you're like a, I mean, Batman is, he's insanely intelligent. He's super rich 
and he's like super attractive, he could just do like the pleasure thing. He could just do like the Andrew Tate thing, just like a bunch of girls. But instead he goes, I'm going to look at all this shit and I'm going to try and fix it. And the pain doesn't go away. He just keeps hurting. He just, no matter what he does, like even if it doesn't even make anything better, it's just like he keeps hurting. The pain doesn't go away. But, and that's where we're at culturally is we're just like so broken right now. Everybody's hurting. Everybody's like, I know the statistics. I'm a statistician. Like all of the body dysmorphia and depression and anxiety rates, it's like exponential curve. Everybody's like deeply traumatized right now. And so what do we do with that? The right thing to do is to try and fix it. It's to try and come together and be like, everything is so corrupt. Everything is so broken. How can we fix it? And it's like, what else are you going to do other than, other than that? You know, like you can do the, and you know, most people are in, most people are in too much pain to even like start to do that. It's like you're drowning in student debt and you have a job and it's like modern dating and like, you're just like barely trying to stay afloat and you're just like anxious and addicted. And it's like, you don't even have the energy to, to try it. Like you can barely deal with your own life, let alone like try and fix everything. But like somebody has to do it. Like, and so that's why I think the archetype is really sticky. There's a reason that we're so obsessed with that character. And it's because we, all of us, maybe individually, but just collectively, more importantly, are like Batman right now. We're, literally, we're just like traumatized. Everything is so awful. Everybody's so, like the school shooting epidemic is just like the fact that that could even exist in the real world as like a system that we've created. And that like the political discourse could be so broken, like, and everybody's just, everybody's depressed. It's just like, that's us. Like we're Batman. Like we're just, we're just traumatized by the system right now. What does Batman do? He goes out and he uses and he tries to take that dark energy and like redirect it into fixing all of it. Like the corruption and the policemen and like the villains and like, and that's, that's what you do when you're, tra that's what, that's the heroic thing to do when you're traumatized is to go and do that. It's not to like make a bunch of money so you can get a bunch of cars so you can like have sex with a bunch of women so you can get more Instagram followers. So you can keep up with the Jones. So you can get bigger muscles. So you can buy even more nicer clothes. So you can look even cooler to your friends. So you can like get the corner office. So you can make even more money and like a hundred thousand isn't enough. So I need a million. So I need 10 million. And like, it's not that. It's understandable why people do that because we're all traumatized, we're all in pain. It's understandable, like that feels better than nothing. You know, the heat is it like the porn and the weed and the alcohol, like that feels better than nothing. It feels better than just pain and trauma. But like the right thing to do, like the heroic thing to do, like the noble thing to do is to take that dark energy, all of us, and just like try and fix things. And like, we don't know how, cause fixing things is hard and complicated, but we have to try. We have to try and do like this thing where it's just like, no, you're evil. No, you're evil. No, you're evil. No, you're evil. That doesn't work. That's not trying. That's not fixing things. That's look at me. I'm so certain and secure and sanctimonious and righteous. I'm on the side of the end. That's not trying. That's not like the, that's not the Batman archetype. Trying is going out and actually trying, which means like coming up with new ideas and like, creativity and intelligence and like wide boundary thinking and let's try it. Oh no, it didn't work. Okay. Let's think of something else. Let's red team it. Let's try it again. Like let's come together. Like let's get the smart people. And like, that's what trying is. Whatever this system is like the kayfabe fake wrestling, like this is not trying. And so I don't know. Hopefully that wasn't like, I 
that character is really important to me. And I think it's important to all of us right now for a reason. It's trying to tell us something. There's a reason we care about Batman so much. It's not arbitrary. And like, what else are we gonna do? Like I said, it's real people. It's like real school shootings. It's like real homeless people. It's real artificial intelligence. It's real climate change. It's like real women that are like having their entire lives ruined because of the, you know, being forced to carry like a child to, a, to term. And like, it's real economic inequality. And like, and like when you're dealing with real people that are really struggling, then like, then what, what is this doing? What, what is the, you're evil, no, you're evil, no, you're evil, no, you're evil, no, I'm the good guy, no, I'm the, that, that, that doesn't help the actual people. It doesn't help the homeless people. It doesn't, it doesn't fix the school shootings. Like school shootings where kids are dying, like that, that system doesn't fix it. It doesn't fix it. And so, And like, I get it. I understand why the system is the way that it is. Like, I understand the technology, like the design of, you know, the technology designs that are causing like the social media outgrouping and like the polarization and everything like that. I get it. And like, I understand that the other side is putting forward just like the stupidest proposals humanly imaginable. And like, I understand that it's hard to think about everything simultaneously interacting and the complexity of the problem space and like, I understand all of that. So I understand why people just go into like, let me pick a side and like, at least I get a feel, at least I can feel like safe on a side because everything's so awful and like, like I'm not using that word lightly. Like just, it's like a traumatized culture right now. Like everybody's in pain. Like, I know, I know, like, the depression rates and the anxiety rates and the body dysmorphia rates and, like, the amount of people in the Midwest that are just killing themselves because it's, like, becoming too much to do anything. And, like, everybody's just in pain. And it's like you talk to... It's like you talk to women, they, they talk about like the, the statistic where it's like one in four women have been like, whatever it is, been like experienced some form of sexual assault or rape or whatever like that. And it's like you actually talk to women in your life and understand like how self-reporting works and stuff like that. And it's just like, it's probably closer to like three out of four or like eight out of 10. And like, that's the system that we've created because men and women are just antagonists at this point. Like... It's not just the left and right, it's everybody. It's the men and the women and the old people and the young people. And it's just like everybody hates each other. And so everybody's just in pain. You go to like a gym and it's just like, you look at like the men walking around and it's just like every person in here is my enemy. You know? If a single person is more attractive or has bigger muscles than me or is like more intelligent, then it's just like in a zero sum game where everybody's my enemy, then I'm a loser. And that makes so everybody's just walking around like traumatized and like anxious and like in fight or flight mode because they're just like so scared. Like then that's the way we're living. Like you can't even make a friend because everybody's your enemy. If you have more money than me, then you're, you know, then you're a better person than me. If I have more money than you, then I'm a better person than you. And like, it's just like, just, just an antagonism everywhere. And like, everybody's walking around just anxious and scared and like body dysmorphic. And that's just like, that's the system that we've created. Everybody's drowning in student debt. Rent prices have gone up like a thousand percent. Like every, everybody's just in pain. So it's no wonder like the, 
the addiction thing is so bad and like it's no wonder that the companies are so effective at like conditioning mass addiction in everybody because like it, I don't know, addiction's better than feeling nothing like I don't know I don't know how to end it. That's my rant. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was thinking about the Batman character. Why it's so culturally important and why it's so important to me and why I care about it, about it so much. So I don't have like, after going on that rant, I don't have a good way to end this. So I'm just gonna end it. There's my Let's see, this was part three of a three-part series. It was, uh, one was a theory of ethics. Why genuinely good people do horrific things. Part two was the prerequisites for a functioning democracy. And then part three was solutions for a failing democracy.